We're here with part four of our C Sharp Unity tutorial series. And in this tutorial, we're going to go into Link. And uh, we'll also incorporate some of the uh, events that we learned about previously. So you can see we're starting out with a pretty basic scene. We just have a cube over here and a plane over here. And uh, if we push play, we can see we have a fire button and a GUI text, and it does absolutely nothing. So the object of this tutorial here, what we're going to do is um, we're going to make something pretty useful. We're going to make an object recycler. On mobile platforms, resources, as you know, are, uh, are pretty scarce. And anytime you call instantiate, it's usually, uh, you know, you'll get a lot of slowdown if you're doing this uh, often in your game. So what we're going to do is create a class that will uh, help us out in this regard. So it'll preload some any prefab that we choose so that it's ready to use. So you can see what we have in the project directory here. Not much going on, just a material with the texture, and we have a bullet prefab. And you can see the bullet prefab is nothing more than a sphere with a rigid body on it. So pretty basic. You might want to, uh, you know, put a texture on here, make your bullet something other than a sphere. But for now, we're just going to use this. So let's jump right into the code. So the class here I have the base all set up. Uh, we're going to call it uh, Object Recycler because it's essentially going to uh, recycle objects for us. And here's something, uh, if you're not familiar with Link, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go into that, but uh, you're going to want to put a using system.link in here. And uh, what Link is, uh, is essentially it's a, a list comprehension series of, uh, of actually just extension methods on the IEnumerable class. So that sounds like... Uh, like a whole bunch of confusion, but what it lets you do is in just a couple lines of code, you can loop through an entire set of objects and perform all kinds of different stuff. But uh, we'll get into that in a minute. So the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and define ourselves a uh, couple, couple instance variables. First one, we're going to use a list. And uh, I'm not sure if we went into generic lists at all, but uh, generic lists are are like arrays essentially. Uh, they have a specific type just like an array does. The difference being that a generic list can actually expand and contract in size. So these are these are super handy. They work a lot like array lists except uh, you know you want to avoid array lists at all costs on mobile devices. It's uh, it's, it's actually uh, array list uh, always stores objects so when you start putting things in an array list and pulling them out, you have to do casting and all that's uh, you know, a bunch of wasted overhead when you have uh, generic lists here. So you can see the, the syntax here is just a little open squiggling. We're going to put the class that we want to store in the list in here. So we're going to go ahead and define one more instance variable here. And this is going to be the object that we want to recycle. That we're actually going to spell it right. Okay, so two instance variables. We have our list and the object that we want to store in the list. So our constructor is already built here. It, it uh, quite simply just takes in a game object and the total number of objects at start. So the game object is usually, you're going to want to pull that from a prefab. In our case, uh, if you recall, we have our, uh, our bullet prefab. So this is what we're going to go ahead and use here. So jumping back in here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and start this up. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create our object store. Okay, so we'll just uh, do an object list equals new, and you'll see you'll get autocomplete for the type here. Monodevelop knows what we want to do. We know how many objects we want to instore, instantiate to begin with because it's being passed in. So the default constructor takes in zero arguments and it'll just create an empty list for you. But we're going to go ahead and use a capacity argument here. So this is uh, just for efficiency sake. If, if you know that you're only going to need five, ten, three, however many objects, you go ahead and pass in the total objects that you want in here. And this will pre-build them all so that you don't have to instantiate them at runtime. So we're, we're also going to store the object that we want to recycle and you'll see why in just a little bit. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a simple for loop and we're going to run through is, uh, the number of times that we pass in here, so the total objects that start. And what we're going to do is 
real simple. We're just going to create, we're going to instantiate all these ahead of time. So this is something you can do. In the, I want to do this in the start function somewhere. And you do this when you have a little loading indicator or, or something else hiding your level loads on here. So this will end up uh, saving you some time in the long run so you don't have to instantiate your objects at runtime. So we'll just call it new object. And we are just going to use object.instantiate. And we're going to use our go. And we have to cast it so that it doesn't, if you object.instantiate will just return an object. So we're just going to cast this to a game object so that we have the specific type we're working with. And the first thing we're going to do is set this to inactive. And uh, that's so that we don't have it visible on screen at all. And it's it's just, uh, you know, it'll be put into our object list so that we can, uh, we can use that later. So let's actually add it to our object store. So this is uh, pretty familiar if you're used to using an array list, you have an add method. And we're just going to add this. Okay, perfect. So straight off, we uh, as soon as we call the constructor, we're going to pass in the prefab and the total number of objects we want created at start. It's going to create the objects, set them inactive, and store them for us. Perfect. So we have a couple of things here. So what we're going to want to do is we need a way to get the next free object. So that's this is where the fun's going to begin here. So currently it's just returning null. So let's just go ahead and fill this in. Okay, so this is going to be a lot of people's first look at link. So we're going to take this one slow. So we're going to say we want to find a free object here. And link looks a lot like SQL if you're if you're uh, familiar with uh, MySQL, SQL Server, or any of the SQL syntax. It's it's very very similar. So what we're going to do is we're going to say from item in object list and we want to find an inactive item because we don't want to reuse an item if it's already in use so we have a where clause and we're going to say where item.active is false so we're going through our list here and we're going to look for something that's some item that's not active and we're going to go ahead and select that item. Okay, so what this is going to do right now in its current state is it's actually going to return right here an ienum rule, which is uh, essentially uh, it's like a list of all of the objects that are not active. That's not quite what we want. We want to make sure that we're only going to be pulling in the first object that is inactive because we only need one right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this in parens here so that we can uh, go ahead and use some more methods. And you can see all these are extension methods on the ienumerable class. The, the entire LINQ, the link library, is all extension methods. So you'll see there's a first or default method. And we're just going to go ahead and call that. So what that does is it'll either return the first object that's not active, or if there is none, it'll return default. And default's going to vary based on your object. For for us, we're using game objects. Remember, we put game objects in our list. So what it's going to do is it's just going to return null if there's none available. If this were a list of integers, it would return 0 as the default value. Or any of the, the simple types, it'll return exactly what they are. But for our particular case, we're going to get back null. So the first thing we want to do is check to see if it's null. OK, so. In this case, it is null. So that means all of our objects are, are currently in use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new one. And we'll do it just like we did above. And you remember, we saved off the object we want to recycle. This is exactly the reason why we saved it up here. So we, we, uh, we stored a copy of object to recycle. And that's just storing a reference to the prefab. And this is precisely the reason we did this. So we want to be able to, if all of our objects are in use, instantiate one at runtime. Now, of course, like we mentioned before, we don't want to have to do this. So you're going to want to choose 
are total objects at start that works for your particular game, but we want to make this flexible. So just in case there is nothing available, we're going to go ahead and create one on the fly and add it to our object list. Okay, so now at this point, we have an actual object. We have a, an instance of our prefab in free object. It either came from the link statement that we hit here, or if that returned null, we created it on the fly. So let's go ahead and set it to active and return it. 